to the Mac Pro. So there's probably one more. Uh, the the Mac Mini for the longest time was uh, rumored to, to 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 be you know discontinued and it never happened. So I. I don't know. If it goes, if the Mac Pro does eventually die, I'll probably have to um, find alternate solutions. Uh, maybe just Packintoshes or something. So. Well, that would be an interesting take to take on that, actually. If they um, somehow changed their thing where they would suddenly go, well, we're going to kill our prosumer but we're going to have a more expensive version of OS X for prosumers to make their own systems now. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see what happens. It's, Apple's definitely not concerned uh, as much with professional uh, professional customers as, as Steve Jobs used to say. So that, that's very clear. Very, very clear. No, well, and, I mean, and the reality is um, why that will piss people like you off and it will piss the diehard Mackians off. The reality is, y'all are not as loyal as the, you know, everything shiny people. I would argue differently. I think that my demographic is more loyal, and that the new shiny people are very. Uh, but you didn't buy. You didn't. You didn't follow the iOS. No, but I did give it a shot. I own three iPhones for them until it drove me crazy that I couldn't use iOS anymore. So, I would say that we're, I'm far more loyal than what I would consider the current demographic. I think the current demographic, many of the new uh, Apple consumers are the fly-by-night consumers. Those that live, live by fashion, so five minutes ago type, type mentality, that once the, 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 the shining and the cool effect has worn off and gone somewhere else, so will they. So, that doesn't mean Apple's going to die, it just means those customers are not the loyal ones. They're the ones that are going to follow the cool trends because they want to be cool. And so I think that I think if you cater to that, it'd be, if you cater to that and you and you attract a larger demographic of that portion of, of, of people that are flight, you better either work very hard to keep them. But I think that's a daunting task given that they're fly by night, uh, uh, or get prepared for a drop uh, from your consumer base. So. By the way, for those of you who are wondering why Bit's frozen, we don't know. <laughs> I froze it again? Yes. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you then. It's Skype's doing something weird tonight. We don't, it's, uh, we don't know if it's Skype or his system, because the computer here is not frozen. We know that. Uh, <laughs> weird, man. And obviously the video thing isn't frozen, because I'm still moving. But yeah, I see like your eyeballs just staring at something. <laughs> <laughs> For default, to see if that works. My camera is on, ironically. I don't know. You know what? I blame that it's Friday the 13th. <laughs> That's what I'm going to blame it on. Because <laughs> it technically just became Friday the 13th. <laughs> is it yet? Not yet. Oh, almost. Yeah, for you it is. But it is over here on this side, and this is the side that it's freezing on. So... <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it freezes on my on my side. It is freezing on my side. Uh, okay. So well, it, whenever that happens, let me know, and then it, it should be working now. Correct. It's working now. Yeah. We'll just go through this refresh cycle. I just don't know what's you know what the deal is. You know, I, I, that's one thing I've never been able to figure out about Skype. I'm surprised with the way it like lags and freezes. Like it doesn't have an auto reinitiate. You have you have to do it. It doesn't I go. Know. I'm locked up. Reinitiate because it could do that itself. It's. Uh. I see that. Uh, all right, so um, we'll, I, we'll stick with Apple and we can just go to WebOS afterwards because I see here you've read my tweets today. Oh, I've, I, yes, I've seen your tweets. I, I you know, I, 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 this is my take on the, the on the store thing. For those of you who don't know. Are you talking about the stores or, or, or oh, you, you, because that was, I, all right, I was reading the, uh, we'll go with the first one. Oh, fine. Start with Another the books. Record. I don't care. <laughs> Start with the books. I don't care. It's well, I thought that was cooler because um, you're, you, I guess your take is do we want Apple really in charge of textbooks? I, they're not going to be in charge. They're, Apple's not in charge of music, but they certainly created a... Their uh, marketplace... They're not deemed a monopoly 
Um, but their marketplace is not agnostic. There are several marketplaces available that are agnostic. You know, choose whatever the heck you want. Sure. A Apple. I, I, I don't mind. I mean, look, it took a lot. It took, I would pretty much say, it took Apple to legally break the, the record companies to a la carte music, essentially. Uh, it was only after they really got traction that the other big outfits that we have today followed suit. It doesn't mean that there was all a cart before Apple. Well, of course it was, but they were the negotiators primarily that broke the industry to give, give us cheaper music. They're also not as successful, but certainly have done, I think, a damn good job with the movie industry. And textbooks, to be quite frankly, I would take Apple in charge of them any day over the states and the federal government and and the current I, I, I don't want a world where every school kid has to buy an iOS device to get their text. They wouldn't. They wouldn't. iTunes runs on Windows and all this other stuff. They'd probably pump it. It doesn't, it, but it's not. Okay. iTunes is built into computers. It is not built into all platforms. It is only, a, it is designed to work with iOS devices. As a matter of fact, Apple deliberately bit Palm's head off when they made the initial WebOS devices work with iTunes so they could access those libraries and integrate well into that content. That they didn't even have a content. They were using Amazon. So. Uh, okay, but see, that that's the thing. Until Apple drops that, I don't want them anywhere no. in charge of fundamental okay, education. Here's what happens. Here's what happens. Apple attacks the publishers and the states and because the thing that I'm after, and I'm, I'm done with university unless I decide to go back and, and finish up at uh, graduate level. I hope you have your hundred grand. <laughs> the thing of it is, is that it's outrageous. Even when I was back in, in, in university, paying the amount of books you had. And, and I, like other students, would try to get older versions that were used and much cheaper that would end up going to class and they're, they're not the books that we need. And we were forced to by these addition idiot things that would go on. Uh, to, to buy these, these ridiculously priced uh, textbooks that depreciate far faster than an automobile does driving it <laughs> off the parking lot when it's brand new. These textbooks depreciate so rapidly, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a scam. It's a total fraud, this, this entire textbook thing, the way it works. So, yes, if it takes Apple to start negotiations with companies to even kill the idea of a textbook and make it like a modular means of, of learning, in other words, I, I, I don't think it's going to take Apple, and, and honestly, I would argue, to be perfectly frank, that Amazon is in a much better position to do that. With the yeah, you with, finish. With, if Apple starts it, I guarantee the competition will be able to make the same deals or close to it, to where they will compete with each other. But usually Apple's had, Apple has, and usually it's been that way recently, right, with, with music and, and, and movies. That Apple had the cojones to spearhead negotiations where there's followed suit. I don't care. They're not going to be a monopoly. I just want the process to start. I think that it is so egregious what's going on with textbooks it, and suits. It, if, today. if it happens the way you want it to, through a company like Apple, it is going to be the same. Here's the thing a lot of people don't realize about the textbook thing there's uh, a handful of companies that make textbooks. But basically, whichever one gets their their foot into a district, they basically own that district, and they decide, and nobody else can come in because it has to be their books, their series of books, and so on and so forth. Uh, Apple works that way in the way they uh, uh, try and control access to their the the marketplace. They're fine to be the marketplace. But they don't want the marketplace access through anything they don't want it access through. Wait, that's very clear. But competition will take care of that. You're going to tell me that Amazon will follow suit once once Apple gets their deal. Their deal. Oh, and I would, I would argue because Amazon is um, basically taking the exact opposite approach and said everybody hook into our thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I understand. But I'm I'm trying to tell you that Apple will not own the textbook industry. They will spearhead and start these negotiations to break the company. So the thing of it is, is, is no, no, them. no. I, 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 I have a case in point to argue with against on that because what Apple did 
was they went to certain universities and they said put your lectures but give iTunes exclusive. Wait a minute, that's the U, that's the U, yeah, the iTunes U, but this is a whole different thing. You, you're, where, you're telling where, me Apple wouldn't try and leverage exclusive? Oh, of course they could have exclusive, but it, won't, it wouldn't last forever. It wouldn't, they wouldn't win in the courts. It's just kind of In like the meantime, children are forced to go through Apple to get access to education. Well, you know what? Okay, if it's, if it's a lesser of two evils, if it means that everything has to go through Apple, but the, the textbooks are one-sixteenth uh, uh, the price of what people or what students pay, then I'd take that. Anything that to destroy the current pricing, because education is already a, a sort of oligopoly, basically, where you already have a few in charge of what's going on anyway. So, and it's heavily regulated by the government. If that's a, a if that's a huge chunk of percent of the cost that we can take out of the students, uh, that the students don't have to pay for, and we put it back in their pocket. But but but, but what if they're in a household that isn't Apple compatible? You just basically dictated for that child. Then guess that what? Apple Apple will have to follow suit because guess, because when Apple's working with state funded universities, they're going to have to do all kinds of things and probably go against their grain and what they want normally for their private sector type things, and I, I use private sector, but education being very public sector in the United States, they would have to acquiesce to but, Well, they haven't had to do that with the universities. Uh, that, 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 because that, that was given to them freely. That's uh, okay, that, well, what if the textbooks are given to them free? That, that's an interesting that's, question. Oh, no, they're going to get it. To, do you think the publishers are going to... Go from the kind of profits they're making now on the hell. <laughs> there is no way in hell that's happening. Well, uh, uh, okay. As, assu very, assuming it comes from the publishers, and that's how it happens. You know, that's actually something I want to see discussed in the thread below. If if people if people think who would give first, do you think? Apple would try and leverage that to make children buy Apple products, or do you think they'd open up to let the to give well, away I their think Apple's leveraging and saying we want to we want to expand the reach of our iTunes content medium and negotiate with these publishers. Now, these publishers are about as going to be as difficult as iAds is for Apple because these guys are used to being in charge. The music industry. Well, I, I see. The, here's the thing. I don't see it happening the way you do. If it does, the way I see it happening, people don't realize how textbooks get written. What happens is the publisher is basically like an editor. They curate all the information together and assemble it into a textbook. There is no reason, especially on particular topics like science and so forth, you couldn't take the system where once an article is published it is immediately distributed to, uh, basically you bypass the publishers in the same way many people do now. can't do that, because the publishers usually have deals with the states, because the states actually dictate what goes into curriculums. So th there's all these guidelines that are, that are actually, that, that's why Oklahoma has a different set of textbooks than Texas, and then Mississippi, and New York, and all this. The states are heavily involved in the type of content that actually is allowed or should be educated within the states. And so it is going to be a very different kind of challenge for Apple. And I just want them to break that price stranglehold that is over students uh, because it takes a huge part. I, I don't want to trade one stranglehold for another. Wait a minute. It's trading a public sector government, really, a government like, pricing structure into a private structure. That, that says I have to buy one company's products to be able to have access to an education. I have to be compatible. I, that, that I do not want to give Apple the authority to decide what computing devices I am allowed to use, what computing devices children are allowed. Do you want to give Apple that kind of power? Apple cannot dictate what you're saying. The best that they could do is take a fraction of the price of the book and give whatever essentially the publishers allow Apple to take for now digitally from their books. 
And I guarantee you this deal that's coming off is probably not even going to be that large. We'll, we'll probably see some rentals, like renting books or something like that, which means that Apple has very little control. I'm actually wanting Apple to, which is difficult to do, and this is what I'm saying, it's difficult to do. It's, it, you, you, you would have to start negotiating with states and saying, if we can commoditize education, See, this, I'm going to get too political, and I'll just stop myself there, because what it does is, is I'm actually... I, I, no, I, I get what you're getting at, but you're missing what I'm getting at. Here's the world I see happening if this happens through Apple. Your kid will come home from school, and instead of saying, must buy a folder, must buy son, one of the mandatory supply things for school kids is not going to be a computing device. It's going to be, you must buy an Apple computing device. It's got, it, it's going to be state sponsored. So it, it, it basically, Dude, it's I've already been there in my class where I had to have a Windows laptop. I had to buy a Windows product that had to be a in, laptop. In, in, I, in college or in the public school system? It was in college. Okay, college is different. I'm talking about if we turn textbooks over, this is inevitably going to be the standard for the public school then, system. Then if, if, okay, if it's outside of college, you're talking about high school, guess who's going to pay for that? It's not the student in the household. It's going to be the taxpayer. So whatever happens, whatever happens, let's say Apple's completely out of the picture and Windows and Amazon decides to take over and make it digitally. The medium of what you're getting at is saying I have to buy a, a Kindle Fire or an iPad or a Windows Slate device. But, okay, okay, but here's the key difference there. The key difference there is you don't need a Kindle to get Amazon books. You can go to Amazon.com and download them. Okay, but Rusty, what, you know what's going to happen anyway? The school's going to make a guideline to whatever. So if they decide to go to Amazon, that's the way government contracts work. There is no sporadic use. Uh, if, if, if it's a physical product that is made mandatory, because you're getting into government at this point. That's what I'm saying. That's why I don't. I dismiss this whole thing because government decides that kind of thing. And Apple will either have to, have to acquiesce or make iTunes run on all kinds of stuff, or they get out of the game altogether. Because once you're in the government realm, which is what we're going to discuss outside of universities, this is a whole different ballgame. And I don't care what it is. If it becomes a, a, a Dell uh, Windows tablet, that will be. That will be required from all the schools within that state that has decided to do the whole bidding process and the acquisition of and all this other crap. I've lived as a programmer in bidding for for state type projects from the city of Houston to the state of Texas. I've been there. And the states, once they can make their damn mind up, that's it. The budgets are written and these are the specific guidelines and that's it. So I don't care what it is. It could be an Apple iPad, it could be a Kindle Fire, and it will be, it, that's it, that's a requirement. There is no, this private choice, because you're in the world of the government at this point. But well, outside that, you know, and, and That is something, it, that, that's the thing I think you're missing here, that it's not just, basically, you're arguing about the price monopoly on the textbooks and the control there. But what you're doing... Point, this is about universities. I don't think they're going to go into high schools. Because uh 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 uh, uh I, I'm seeing too many schools go all ebook, and and it scares well, and it scares the bejesus. Put it uh, this way: we we have no argument, you are you and I, when it comes to anything outside of university, because essentially at that point you get into subsidies and the government's take on everything and the districts and. Uh, and, and and that's what I'm getting at, Marcel. When you get into these ebooks. We should. Uh, you you do not want to trade the agalopoly of the publisher for the agalopoly of tech because one thing we have proven time and time again is the government is incompetent when it comes to understand how they're handicapping. Well, to change that, what I'm trying to and what I'm trying to get at is if we do make these books digital and we break the idea of a textbook, that's essentially what I'm after. Or even renting it, we've reduced a tremendous amount of the costs. Now. I, I, since I believe that if Apple spearheads it, what I believe is since government's too hard of a thing to move in the private sector without us voting, essentially, to start changing stuff, that schools will eventually start saying, ooh, we can save a buck or two here at the lower, uh, the lower curriculums, lower grade levels, and things like that. 
And we all know across the country right now that school districts are suffering and this and that, blah, blah, blah. And they'll try I, to find I, I Actually, I would be honest, and this is why I think doing this right is so important. They would say far more than a buck or two here. The reality is, once you get rid of the physical, tangible book, uh, this is one of the things that has always driven me nuts about our education system on all levels. And that is, this is, you know, this is less of a problem at the university level because, like you said, the university passes the buck to you and they just say, students, go buy brand new books. We've decided we want the brand new book. But at all levels, it's basically... Uh, the newer version of the textbook has additional information, but because it's a physical book, you have to throw away this one printed copy and go buy this new printed copy. Once you get rid of the physical book, you can treat it very much like a periodical thing. New revision every year, push out the new update. Yeah, in line updating, and that's what I was tweeting on, uh, putting on Twitter. And, and the thing of it is, is that if we break the, even the idea of textbooks is that, oh, I just, I'm going to rent a module or, or I'm using too technical term, a, a chapter or a section of a book because typically speaking, this class was really taken doesn't really use all of the textbook. How many classes have we been in where we use only maybe a third of the book? And well, and really the better teachers don't limit themselves by the textbook. They go out and find that additional information and bring it into the classroom. And this yeah. way, Rather than then having to go print stuff or put e things online or everything else, it's there right in the kids' textbook or the students or what you know whatever level of the education thing. I, I, what I've mastered is Apple to start breaking the industry, start breaking the idea of a textbook. Let's make it cheaper, and I guarantee you, Amazon and everybody else is going to step in. And then once it gets even at the high school level, you have too school. much blind faith in Apple. I want anyone but Apple to I, do it. They're not going to be able to make deals. I will, government does not work that way. They have to go through an enormous bidding process and all this other crap when they want to get to those levels of uh, making all textbooks go through them. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It will be a, at the government level, it will be a bidding process and Amazon will be there and all. And, I, and I, there's going to be upstarts too to do this as well. But once you're at the government level, whatever. I just want the process to begin to start chipping away at these idiot, this idiot policy and, and, and behavior uh, that is in which, uh, especially college students, have to play these enormous. We're talking. I remember one of my textbooks almost cost three hundred freaking dollars. Oh uh, th no, that's nothing. I've seen ones that cost seven hundred fifty. It's insane. That is absurd. Now, and, now, now uh, granted. For those of you who are wondering, 750 oh, there was a bonus with that one. You could use it for all three years if you were taking all three years of this particular subject. However, it was the only one you could buy for that particular subject, so if you were only taking one year of it, you still had to pay 750 bucks for it. <laughs> yes, yeah, I, I don't have a problem. I know as much as, as you do with Apple. Why? Because the music industry is, iTunes does not run it. Amazon has now has no, no, it's not that I have a problem with Apple. Music. It's that I have a problem with the fact that their marketplace is not agnostic. If Apple made their marketplace, I, I, I know that. But guess what? The competition will be. Oh, okay, but if, if, like you're talking about, we have the fundamental problem of the way government contracts work, and if Apple oh, that's, wins, that's the side we can't. Dude, when that happens, there's going to be a lot more than just the companies talking. Because well, well, okay, here's, let, let me paint my nightmare scenario. My nightmare scenario, and this is why I'm so opposed to it being Apple, as long as Apple isn't agnostic and who has act, and, and allowing universal access to its marketplace. Well, my, can I ask you before we even start that rant, what makes you think that they would be able to get a monopoly on this versus, because they, they don't have a, a monopoly on music. They don't have a monopoly on books. Because, monopoly because monopoly on books. if you'll let me explain my nightmare scenario, you'll understand my concern. Okay. Okay. My nightmare scenario, because of the way, like you're talking about, government contracts work. Basically, whoever gets the contract is who they use for X years. Mm -hmm. My concern is this will start at the university level, and it already kind of is, but eventually it's going to whittle its way all the way down to kindergarten. Okay. This is my nightmare scenario. I'm living somewhere, my kid's in a district, they're learning their 
base computer skills, knowledge, yada yada. They are in a district that mandates Apple. Apple hasn't grown up. Apple hasn't embraced getting outside the sandbox. So basically, I ha there's a my kid and every kid in that district. And I'm talking about Ethereum. You actually have kids. I don't yet. But the, a generation of children are basically computer skills are reduced to thing only. We need to be expanding that more than ever, not contracting it on any level. We need to be encouraging our educational system to be more agnostic because that is necessary for the next generation of people coming forward to be able to really fully contribute to the industry. They don't need to be boxed into Apple, boxed into Windows, boxed into Linux. They need to be able to understand that the industry kind of moves all over the place. They need to have good base skills not only know one way of doing things, one ecosystem, one time. And I do not want to create a situation where if company X gets the bid, we are further handicapping kids than we already do now. Because it's important not to do that to them. That's my concern well, there. All right, I have, th I have three rebuttals to that. One, the, there, there's too much government. There's, in other words, we have like HISD, Cypher ISD, KDI ISD. All of them are not going to necessarily always go with one computer. Two, what you're wanting is not practical. When I grew up, when I was young, in my elementary school, all I had were apples. Never saw a Windows computer. Never. I only got into Windows in my later life. And I'm an extremely diverse computer user at this point. Even though all of my childhood was a monopoly under the Apple computer, that does not guarantee that the ch that, that, that children will be just c completely that operating system or that behavior of computing for the rest of their lives. The, the other part of it, which was the third part of it, is if it, it would cost the taxpayers at that, label, uh, that level too much money to educate a child who's five, six, seven, eight years old and then on up Here's Linux, here's Windows, here's Apple, here's, you know, here's... You honestly think computer. it's that hard? <laughs> well, wait a but that, wait, there's, there's, with the way government structures education? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, no, you're, you're right. Good. With the way government structures education, but that's, wait, wait that's part of I'm, the... We're not talking in this show about changing education. Now, let's be very real. We're not changing education overnight, and that kind of thing is not going to go away. And, and let's just say, all right, from... Go back into the years from 1980. Let's just say that we're going to take all the technology now and move it back in the 80s. So from 1982 to 1984, my school is going to run Apple. From from 1984 to 1986, it's going to run Windows. From 86 to 88, it's going to run Linux. Each generation that goes through is going to still learn an operating system because it's it's cheaper for a taxpayer to say, okay, we've got these set of computers. This operating system is going to last us. X amount of years on a budget. We don't have to increase taxpayer dollars or whatever to worry about this part of our budget anymore until, you know, 84 or 86. So, I mean, don't worry about kids. Oh, oh my God, they just learned Apple from age 4 to freaking 12. So that means they're going to be an Apple user for a story. Oh, hell no. I, I, was, I, was, I was Apple for the majority of my life as a child. And, and, and look at me. The majority of my consumers are Windows users. It's, 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 I, don't, I can't buy that, what you're, you're, you're thinking or, or worry about that, because things are too rapid, technology is too rapid. They're going to grow up, they're going to be 16 years old, okay, their entire high school or whatever is all Macintosh, and they're going to go be an accountant, and they're going to get thrown right in front of freaking windows or whatever. So, well, that, that, that's what I'm, I'm concerned about. about. I, I mean, it's... Uh, I, I've seen that, where people were in a school with... But, one, you know, it's not going to happen. Your fear is not going to happen, because... I'm already proof. I'm already proof, man. And so, and so, and so is my brother, who's not even a programmer. He's, he's into psych, you know, psychology and shit. So and am I. But I, you honestly think the majority of people are willing to just go learn something new, learn something new? Of course. If your entire school career is the same, dictated in one operating system, but you want to do a job, number one, when you get the university level, you're, the, 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 if the college is worth a damn. They will probably have the software in the operating system needed if it's not compatible with other operating systems uh, to do whatever you need to do. But I guarantee you, once you get to work, which is when our careers all start and all this other stuff, 
you're going to do whatever the hell it takes to do your career. And if that means you're on Linux and you're doing like some administration and uh, network maintenance and, and uh, the, 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 the NMC, the network, the, 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 like the NMCs that we have, the network ma management centers, you're going to be all Linux. If you're in accounting, you're likely going to be in Windows. If you're uh, creative and artistic, you're likely going to have a Mac. I mean, that's today's stereotypical way things kind of pan out on the computers, although Yes, there's exceptions now. Uh, Adobe on Windows and all sort of crap. And I don't want to get into that detail. I'm just trying to generalize and say it does not matter what they learn as kids or what is there because their career dictates everything once they go on there. And you know what? Yeah, let's say that they go into a career that doesn't even require a computer, which is probably hard to imagine. I, 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 I find it hard to find any career yeah. that's not going to require... But, but with this, they're probably going to, let's say they're a mechanic. They're going to go to a shop that's probably running some DOS level them uh, program. They don't even see a UI. It's just freaking the, the old green screen kind of crap. You know, I mean, this is this, this, uh, utterly ridiculous to worry about. Oh my God, how dare Apple go in there and they're going to brainwash these kids. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Sorry. Life doesn't work that way. All right. <laughs>